Hello everyone, I am Varun Yadav, Cloud Engineer here at Oracle and with me I have my colleague Alita Trivedi. Today we are going to discuss shredding and querying in Visual Builder with Offline Toolkit. Before we dive in the advanced topic of Shredder, if you are new to Offline Toolkit, check out this video by our Visual Builder Product Manager Shay on how to add offline capabilities to an Oracle Visual Builder application. Let's understand what is shredding. When we configure the endpoint, the entire body of the response payload will be cached. But what if we want to make query in this payload? To support the case where a subset of a previously cached collection is requested, the toolkit includes a response shredding mechanism. Rather than storing the text of the response payload as a document, the payload can be broken down or shredded into individual object and property which are then written as entry into the persistent store. For example, if you take a look at the payload in the response payload, after shredding, it will create three records in the store. If we perform query, for example, department ID equal to 10, it will return two objects from the local store and it will do a reverse shredding, also called unshredder, in order to produce the response payload. To enable this capability, the application must be configured with a shredder, unshredder, and the query handler. So if you take a look, here we are creating a store called EMP with the query handler employee ID. There are two types of shredder and query handler. The first is Oracle REST JSON shredding, which confirm to the Oracle REST standard. And the another one is simple JSON shredder. Structure of response payload can vary from endpoint to endpoint. So whenever we are not getting the simple flat JSONs collection, at that point we can create a custom shredder. Here in this case, as we can see, the data is set up around the data key over here. So we can create a custom shredder in this case. With this, now I will pass it over to Alitya to show us the demo for out of the box shredder and how to create a custom shredder in Visual Builder application. Over to you, Alitya. Okay, thank you, Varun. Uh, let's get into the demo. Um, I've built a similar app to the one that Shay has. I've added my offline code. Um, and as you can see, currently the shredder code is commented. Um, so let's just uh, take a look at what the app looks. So um, here I have the app, I have a search bar, I have a refresh, um, and then I have a table that um, calls an API, which returns uh, two rows of data and it's being shown here in the table. Uh, now let's take a look at the, the API call itself, right? So uh, the structure is pretty simple. It's just an array of objects. Um, and because it is this simple, uh, you don't need a custom shredder and uh, the basic shredder that comes with OPT can handle this structure, okay? So uh, let's take a look at uh, the application uh, this is where under index DB is where the OPT kind of stores its um, its data. So um, when I made this call to fetch these two records, what it did was it created a store called system cache, um, offline caches and system cache. And then in, within this store, if you go under by sequence, uh, let me just expand this, but you will be able to see that uh, the key is basically our call uh, URL that we have made, we are making, and the response data under text is is this data that is being shown here. So um, so when you don't use a shredder, what happens is this is the default store that is created under index DB, and all the subsequent calls that you make to this service uh, get written into this uh, store. Um, so like let's make a call to search for employee ID equal to one, right? Um, so what this is going to do is now you'll see that it's, it, it says, you know, data may be stale. So if I refresh, it added another key. Uh, and this time, if you look at the URL, you will see that uh, uh, the query parameter ID equal to one is being passed, right? Uh, so, so this particular call and this particular call's response is being stored right here. So now let's say if I change my app to offline mode um, and then let's go back to application. Um, if I clear this, uh, then it's going to work, right? Because um, the call that 
was being made is basically the call that is stored right here right on the first call um, and if I do one then that is also going to work right because uh, we just made that call and it stored that particular row uh, into the index TV now if I change this uh, let's first refresh it now if I try to make the call for two then it's not going to work right because uh, we're not using the shredder number one and number two um, the id equal to two key is not present in this in this store um, we only made the call for one when we were off online and that's why you know this id equal to two is not going to work um, and for this particular reason uh, the offline persistence toolkit has the shredder uh, mechanism so um, let's go back online let's go to code and uncomment this so that we are using the shredder now um, and just to give you some context uh, what we are using is the simple json shredding and uh, documentation on that is available on the oracle.github.io um, if you let, check this class you'll see that it has those two methods of get shredder and get unshredder um, the get shredder uh, as you can see it uses it takes in two parameters uh, the third one is optional but uh, the first one is the store name so whatever name you wish to give to the store uh, you're defining it there so you can do that uh, in cases you have multiple calls and you're storing you know multiple data objects um, you can differentiate uh, using that store name um, and then id attribute as it mentions you know is the uh, the field that is in the json data which uniquely identifies uh, each row um, so going back to our code uh, in my case the name of the store is emp um, and in the data that is being returned id field is my unique primary key so i've used that um, another thing which are we are using is the uh, query handlers um, so again going back to the documentation under query handlers uh, you will see that you have two options simple query handler or oracle rest query handler in this case, in this demo, we're using the simple one because whenever we make the call to filter um, our employees, we are not using the Oracle REST query standards uh, like the, you know, the queue parameter or something. We are just directly passing employee ID in, in the query uh, instead of using the queue. Um, okay, so to use these two classes, what we have to do is we just have to basically um, add these two values here and uh, then in the function we just add them so we're just basically importing those classes uh, since they're readily available with vbcs um, you can just directly just write this and start using it so now if i hit play um, and let's go ahead and inspect and under application and this time if you see under index db uh, you know this uh, still gets created uh, but you'll see another store this time called EMP um, and if you open the EMP store and look for by sequence you will see that there are two rows inserted so what the shredder did was it took our response uh, it used the ID field that we gave in this case was ID and it broke it down into uh, you know uh, two rows now after going offline um, the one call is obviously going to work because we had that here, right? Um, uh, but now the ID equal to two call will also work uh, because of the shredder implementation. Um, okay, so now let's talk about why you need custom shredders. Um, so let's say you have a scenario where instead of the API returning a flat structure, it returns, you know, um, an object and then inside that there's a key and then against the key you have the data right uh, and this can be n number of levels but i'm just for example i'm just giving it one level nested right um, in this case uh, if i just run my code uh, with the, the simple json shredders uh, you will see in the console a couple of you know minor errors um, the, the most important error being, you know, there is an error in trying to put, you know, the data into the cache. Um, so then if you open application under index DB, uh, and if you open that EMP um, store, uh, under that you will see that, you know, there is no data inserted. 
because the simple uh, json shredder fails uh, to find the data on the top level right um, so what you can do uh, to overcome this is use you know custom shredders uh, the way to use custom shredders is you can go to the offline persistence toolkit github page uh, within that there is a src folder and within the src folder uh, you will see you know all the the code for the shredders um, you can either copy this whole class uh, and define your own class in VBCS and then basically import that class. Uh, but in this example, I'm just copying, uh, you know, these functions because they're just three small functions, right? Uh, so you copy those functions, you come back to your VBCS page and then you paste them uh, right after, you know, all your offline code, right? Um, I have it pasted, so I'm just going to remove my um, comments. And you see uh, these need to be added to the offline handler class, right? And after adding the, the code down below, what you can do is uh, just change this so that um, it, you know, calls our shredder functions instead of, you know, the those functions. And after adding the code, um, there are just two changes that you need to do. Uh, first change is in the get shredder function. Uh, by default, uh, the payload JSON is just, you know, uh, the payload as is, right? Uh, but in our case, you have nested levels. So in my case, I have it under records, uh, but you might have, you know, multiple nested levels or a different key that holds the actual data that you want to shred, right? Uh, depending on that, you can, you know, change, um, change this line so that this payload is the actual data that is that needs to be shredded and then the rest of the code will you know do its thing and uh, make it work and then the second change is to change in the retrieve data content because when the data is shredded and saved into the store uh, now let's say you, you you're trying to retrieve the data back uh, as a single whole payload the unshredder is basically what does that uh, then again while unshredding the data you also need the data to be represented as whatever your, um, you know, output uh, is of the API, right? Basically uh, an object uh, with the key records and then against that you have the data. So um, just two minor changes uh, that you have to do. Uh, and this again depends on your API and, you know, which key and which field holds the data, uh, but, but you can make these changes. Um, after you make these changes, uh, you can just hit play and uh, you'll see uh, that this app loads and now uh, within this app, you'll see that cache.put error, you know, it just kind of goes away. And um, if we go to application this time and under the employees under by sequence, if I now refresh the data, you'll see that uh, the shutter is working basically just like just the same as it was working. Um, earlier right and another way to verify that you know our implementation of the shredder is getting called um, is you can put a debugger at that line that we made the change and now if I refresh the page uh, you'll see that once the call is being made it will you know call the get shredder and um, it will stop at this line. Now, if you take a look at this json.parse of the payload, you'll see that uh, this is the structure that is being returned from my API. And since in my case, the data is under records, I have done dot records. Um, in your case, it could be a different field uh, or if it's multiple nested, uh, then you can make changes accordingly.